All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to calculate sine of square root of i because life is complex and so is sine of square root of i. And in order to do this, let's first calculate square root of i. And I would like to remind you the way it's done, square root of i is i over square root 1 half. And then i is just ei pi over 2 plus multiples of myself, so 2 pi m i. And all this 2 to 1 half, which then becomes, if you multiply the exponents, it's ei pi over 4 times e uh, pi m i literally multiples of myself. And if you use a cosine plus i sine, you should find that this is just plus minus 1. And for this, also use uh, cosine plus i sine. So this is cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4, again, times plus or minus 1 which in the end gives you plus or minus 1 over square root of 2 plus i over square root of 2. Okay, so this is square root of i, and we need to calculate sine of that. So we need to calculate sine of plus or minus 1 over square root of 2 plus i over square root of 2. And the good news is sine is an odd function, so this is the same thing as plus or minus sine of 1 over square root of 2 plus i over square root of 2. Okay, and the question is, how do you evaluate those complex values of sine? Well, for this, you need complex exponentials. And let me remind you, in general, sine of z is e to the iz minus e to the minus iz over 2i. And you might say, pi m, this is too easy. And I say, no, it's 2 e to the iz minus e to the minus iz over 2i. Although it's a bit harder to pronounce, I feel. OK, and now with z is 1 over blah, 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 you just plug this in. So now we get plus or minus. OK, let's see plus or minus 1 over 2i times e to the i times 1 over square root of 2 plus i over square root of 2 minus e to the minus i times 1 over square root of 2 plus i over square root of 2. And now the trick is simply to separate out the real and imaginary parts. So this becomes plus or minus 1 over 2i times. So i times i, i i captain, this is e to the minus 1 over square root of 2 times e to the i over square root of 2. And then minus e to the minus i times i, that is 1. So 1 over square root of 2 and then e to the minus i over square root of 2. OK, and now, well, the real parts are just real, <laughs> for real. And the imaginary parts, you again use cosine and i sine. And we end up getting the following. <laughs> So this becomes plus or minus 1 over 2i, and then e to the minus 1 over square root of 2, then cosine of 1 over square root of 2 plus i sine of 1 over square root of 2. That's one thing. And then minus e to the 1 over square root of 2 cosine of minus 1 over square root of 2, which is the same thing as cosine of 1 over square root of 2, and then sine of minus 1 over square root of 2, which is minus i sine of 1 over square root of 2. Now, this looks like a horrible expression, but the good news is it simplifies quite a bit. 
because here, notice, we do have a common factor of cosine of 1 over square root of 2. And we also have a common factor of sine of 1 over square root of 2. So in the end, we get plus or minus um, yeah, cosine of so 1 over 2i. Or maybe actually, let me put this later. So plus or minus cosine of 1 over square root of 2. So e to the minus 1 over square root of 2 minus e to the 1 over square root of 2 over 2i, okay, and then plus i sine of 1 over square root of 2. And um, again, minus minus is plus, so e to the 1 over square root of 2. And I believe uh, there should be a minus, no, a, a plus, so plus e to the minus 1 over square root of 2. And again, over 2i. I know, it looks like we've done nothing. We just took a horrible expression and simplified it to another horrible expression. But notice what is going on now. First of all, the i's here cancel out. And at the, in the end, you have this expression, e to the pla plus e to the minus pla over 2. And oh my gosh, yes, it is cosh. So this is the same thing as cosh of 1 over square root of 2. And similarly here, with this expression, e to the minus and then e to the 1 over square root of 2, it's almost singe, except it's flipped because we kind of need this first and this next. So we get minus sinh of 1 over square root of 2. So in the end, what we're left with is now the following. So this is plus minus. All right, cosh, no, cosine of 1 over square root of 2. OK, minus sinh of 1 over square root of 2 over i, and then plus sine of 1 over square root of 2 times cosh of 1 over square root of 2. But we can simplify this even further, because notice minus 1, it's the same thing as i squared. So if you cancel out the i here, you do get something of the form you know, a plus ib, because then in the end, finally, we have our formula. We get that sine of square root of i becomes plus or minus the following. I don't know which one you want to start with, but let's say sine of 1 over square root of 2, cosh of 1 over square root of 2, plus i. Um, cosine of 1 over square root of 2 times sinh of 1 over square root of 2. Which is quite beautiful. I call it the dance of sine and cosh, and cosh, cosine, and sinh. It's quite nice. And by the way, I did put this in Wolfram Alpha to get an approximation. So you do get plus or minus 0.8192 plus 0.5835i, in case you're curious. And again, what is this useful for? I have no idea. Sometimes you do just have to appreciate the beauty of this. And by the way, in case you're wondering, so this is sine of square root of i. What if I did square root of sine of i? Then we get something actually quite different, because square root of sine of i, by the same logic, this becomes, again, e to the i z, so e to the i times i, minus e to the i times minus i, e to the minus i z, so e to the minus i times i over 2i. And the beautiful thing is it simplifies, because then we get e to the minus 1 minus e to the 1 over 2i. But um, 
So I think um, this 1 over 2i, I think that just becomes square root of minus i times e to the mi or yeah, e to the minus 1 minus e to the 1 over 2. Which then, if you flip this, this becomes square root of i times e minus e to the minus 1 over 2. But look, in general, it is not true that square root of a, b is square root of a times square root of b. But it is true if one of those is real, and this is real, so we get square root of e minus e to the minus 1 over 2 times square root of i. And this is just, let's see, uh, this is just the same thing as sinh of 1. So square root of sinh of 1. And this one we calculated. So this is plus or minus 1 over square root of 2 plus i over square root of 2, which looks very different from uh, sine of square root of i, which we should expect because it's, um, you know, I think square roots are generally not commutative, even in uh, real analysis and stuff. All right, but I hope you like this complex number extravaganza. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.